How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to take a look at the upcoming title Dune Awakening being developed by Funcom. In this game you will rise from survival to dominance in a vast and seamless Arrakis shared by thousands of players. Dune Awakening combines the grit and creativity of survival games with the social interactivity of a large persistent multiplayer game to create a unique and ambitious open world survival MMO. As of the creation of this video, there is still no planned release date for Dune Awakening. And you can still sign up for beta testing on their website, I put the link for that in the description of this video. Today's sponsor is G Fuel, the official energy drink of eSports. G Fuel is formulated with gamers and gaming in mind to help boost energy, focus, endurance, and reaction time. Formulated with no sugar and no gluten. Just natural, clean, vitamin and antioxidant fortified energy. Available in over 40 flavors. You can choose between ready to mix powders and ready to consume cans. If you're not sure what to buy, check out the starter kits. Each one comes with a shaker and seven flavor packs. My favorite is the glow in the dark shaker for those late night gaming sessions. Visit gfuel.com and use promo code WAC4863 at checkout to receive a 20% discount on your purchase. For those of you who aren't familiar, the Dune Saga is set thousands of years in humanity's future. Faster than light time travel has been developed and humans have colonized a vast number of worlds. However, a great reaction against computers has resulted in a ban of any kind of thinking machine, with the creation or possession of such punishable by immediate death. Despite this prohibition, humanity continues to develop and advance other branches of technology, including extrasensory perception and instruments of war. At the time of the first book's setting, humanity has formed a feudal interstellar empire known as the Emporium, run by several great houses that oversee various planets. Of key interest is the planet of Arrakis known as Dune. A desert planet with nearly no precipitation, it is the only planet where a special life-extending drug, Malang, or the Spice, can be found. In addition to life extension, Malang enhances the mental capacity of humans. It allows for the mutated spacing guild pilots to navigate folded space and travel the distances between planets, and triggers some of the powers of the Bene Gesserit, a religious group that secretly seeks to control the direction humanity takes. Malang is difficult to acquire not only due to the harsh environments of Arrakis, but also the presence of giant sandworms that are drawn towards any rhythmic sounds on the sands of the desert. Control of Arrakis, its spice production, and the impact on humanity's development become the center points of the millennia-long conflict that develops through the series. Now let's look at what Funcom says your gameplay experience is going to be like. Your journey begins on Arrakis, alone on the deadliest planet in the universe. Follow your story throughout Dune, meeting characters from the movies and books. Discover new allies and enemies and exploit your relationships to uncover the mystery that lies beneath the surface of the sands. In one interview with PC Game Show, Joe Bylos actually mentions that when you start off, you are a castaway that is only armed with a knife that you put together from some scrap metal. I find it interesting that he uses the term castaway as if Arrakis wasn't your intended destination and you ended up shipwrecked on that planet. So the beginning of Dune Awakening sounds familiar, at least it does to me. You are someone that is stranded on a strange land, not where you intended to be, and you now have to fight to survive in that land. Now this sounds very similar to another game that Funcom has produced, Conan Exiles, where you are in exile that has nothing at the beginning and you have to work your way up into surviving, building, and dominating. And remember those three terms because they're going to come into play play a little bit later on in the video as we continue to dive deeper into what we know about Dune Awakening. 
and I'm going to draw a lot of connection between Conan Exiles and Dune Awakening because for one, I've been covering Conan Exiles for quite some time, so I see those parallels there. But in addition to that, Conan Exiles was Funcom's most popular game, and I don't see any reason why Funcom wouldn't take the things that they've learned from Conan Exiles and bring them into the Dune universe. Now, there's definitely going to be a character creator in Dune Awakening, but it goes even deeper than that. Craft your identity and build your prowess from deep character creation to skills and abilities that develop the more you use them. Declare your loyalties by what you wear and become known by what you do. Whether you are a specialized master or a multi-talented adept. Some of the things that Joel said in his interview with PC Gamer stuck out to me about the training system or about the leveling system that's going to be present in Dune Awakening. In that interview, he explained that you have to consume spice in order to level up skills. And they have what they're calling active skill training. So you're actually choosing what you want to train but the amount of time that you're going to be able to train those skills is based upon the amount of spice you have in your bloodstream. What's gonna be interesting for me is to see if there's multiple ways to kind of grow your character, develop your character. Will we have an attribute system that we just are able to unlock certain things as we level up, and then those attributes can then become better because we train them with spice, or is it all going to be locked to the spice and we have to get that resource in order to then level up anything at all or even unlock other attributes? I think if you can't unlock attributes without having the spice, it can create a kind of a gridlock where you may end up in a situation where you can't progress because you are not powerful enough to go and get the spice, but you need that spice to be able to get more powerful. I also think that active skill training is an interesting concept from the standpoint that you're really going to have to plan on your excursion. What are you going out to do? What types of weapons are you going to use in that next encounter? And how are those decisions going to benefit the skills that you're actively training? I'm planning on covering Dune Awakening through the development cycle and then after it releases. So if you're interested in more Dune videos, I'd recommend subscribing to the channel and joining the 50,000 other people who have already made that decision. So you remember earlier when I told you to remember the mantra from Conan Exiles, survive, build, and dominate. Well, the character progression for Dune Awakening has been described as having four key parts. Survive, protect, expand, and control. These are basically the same things as we see in Conan Exiles. However, there's a big difference from Conan Exiles and Dune Awakening, and that is the fact that it is a massive multiplayer online game that has PvP inherently in a lot of the areas of the planet. So venturing outside of the safe zones puts you in a situation where you could lose everything from other players or from the PvE environment. Bill Your Summerback, the game director for Dune Awakening, actually described if you're eaten by a sandworm, there'll be nothing left of you and you will leave nothing behind. Now inherently that makes me think that there is drop on death if you're killed in another way. However, if the sandworm gets you, there's no getting your loot back. I'm not 100% sure whether you'll even get your character back, although I think it would be a very hard sell to not have a respawn if you actually got eaten by a sandworm, but we'll have to see if that's a thing once Dune Awakening comes out. Speaking of ways to lose your loot or possibly cash in on somebody else's gear, you will engage in epic third-person combat, from deadly ambushes to massive organic battles. With fast-paced interplay between infantry, ground, and flying vehicles. Utilize everything at your disposal, from Holtzman gadgets to an array of ranged firearms. Stretch the limits of human potential using melee techniques and other abilities taught by the great schools of the Emporium. 
So there really are four key factors to combat in Dune Awakening. One is going to be melee combat, then we have the ranged firearm combat, we then have ground combat, so ground vehicles, and then we have flying combat, so flying vehicles. And I gotta tell you, I'm really excited to get my hands on the orthocopter. I think that in and of itself is going to make Dune Awakening worth playing. Now we know that Arrakis is a sandy planet. It is basically all desert, which Funcom should be really good at because they've dealt with a lot of that terrain in Conan Exiles. But Dune Awakening brings the epic landscapes of Arrakis to life. Explore deep caverns pockmarked with caves, ancient underground ecology labs, boundless rolling dunes, and beyond. Wander the bustling villages before braving the lawless and ever-changing deep desert where bandits seek easy prey. Beyond the shield wall, the massive Coriolis storm regularly alters the landscape to uncover new secrets. From valuable natural resources to crashed ships and ancient testing stations, when the dust settles, the race is on. Scout the fresh new land and uncover the secrets of the sands. Infinite exploration is a term used by Joel to explain the ever-changing world of Arrakis. You see, the Coriolis storms that happen on Arrakis change the landscape, so it's going to move sand around the planet so that you have access to different areas. Now, this is an interesting concept and kind of a unique idea that I'm really looking forward to when this game comes out. I really want to see how much it'll change and whether it'll change in a way where you'll see the same places over and over again if you play long enough or if they have some infinite number of changes that they're going to be making. I mean, it'd be really cool if they were to set it up where on that weekly basis when it's changing, there is a brand new thing that they've developed and designed in order for you to go and check out. This is something that would absolutely be phenomenal if they were able to do that. However, even if they only have a hundred variations of different places that could be uncovered, it has the potential of making the game feel like it's never growing stale. Now the whole premise of the gameplay is to control the spice. Search the deserts for massive spice blows to harvest the most valuable resource in the universe. Gather players for a foray into the deep desert or scavenge what you can on the sidelines. Sell spice on the exchange or consume it to expand your potential at the cost of addiction. Create a guild and grow it into a house miner by allying yourself with one of the great houses. Rise above your rivals and assert economic dominance by controlling the valuable resource known as spice. But like the sands, the power is ever shifting. Now something that I haven't seen a whole lot of information about in the research that I've done is the base building. You are able to create a base choosing each building piece from a range of distinct styles. Find solid rock away from roaming sandstorms and raise a temporary outpost for your interest beyond the shield wall. I think the reason why we haven't seen a lot of information about the building system in Dune Awakening is because it's more of a necessity than it is a feature. So unlike Conan Exiles where you're able to go on and create these amazing elaborate bases, I feel like the bases or the building that you're going to be doing in Dune Awakening is going to be more of a necessity and more for functionality than it will be anything else. I think it's also important to remember that this is an MMO that is based around having PvP. So there are not different game modes that are going to come with Dune Awakening. It's one game mode with safe areas, which would be areas where you can't fight players, you can't fight the environment, and then there's going to be areas where you can fight other players, and then there's probably going to be areas where you can only fight the environment. I'm also positive that there is going to be a base rating in Dune Awakening from some of the things that Villier said during his interview with PC Gamer, where he talks about the fact that you want to protect the things that you have in your base, and then at some point in time, when you have grown to a substantial level, you may look around and see what other guilds or factions have and want to go after those resources. 
Additionally, this is not a game for those that want to play solo. You may start out solo and meet people along the way, but this is definitely a game where you're going to want to be in a guild so that you can actually partake in taking over the spice trade on Arrakis. And I'm sure that I'll be looking to put a guild together once the game comes out. So join my Discord so you can get notified when we start to put that together. Don't forget to whack the like button on your way out. And let me know in the comment section below, what are you most excited for with Dune Awakening? I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.